Now, as hospitalizations and deaths from coronavirus continue to fall and dis- remain low despite increases in inf- infections, there are growing calls for the government to stop publishing the figures on a daily case numbers. Tory MPs are among those calling for the case figures to be scrapped, with many concerns that the statistics are causing unnecessary fears. One of the MPs who believes that these updates should be scrapped is the former Conservative leader, Sir Ian Duncan-Smith. I'm delighted to say he joins me now. Ian, why do you think that we should be um, stopping these now? Well, I can't see the purpose that they serve. Um, They're not the complete figures and very selective. Uh, For example, why are we reporting the death rates when coronavirus death rates are way down compared to uh, pneumonia or other death rates from heart disease, etc., or even uh, cancer? There's a whole list of them where there's higher death rates. We don't report those. So what we're getting is a distorted view of life in the UK and death and other figures are not displayed. For example, hospitalizations have no longer been displayed. We don't see the display for the numbers in ICUs. Both of those are relatively low, or in the case of ICU, ICU is incredibly low. So, so it's a very peculiar choice of figures, and it seems only to be there to feed the idea that there is some crisis uh, in our area over this, and that this is the only issue that we need to worry about. The truth is, We need to desperately now get back to the concept of living with the balance of risk. We live all our lives normally by taking choices, making choices that balance risks. We know what the risks are. We know what the rewards are. We balance how we operate crossing the road, driving cars, driving motorcycles, you know, going to football matches. These are all balance of risk elements that we do every day. And we recognize what the concerns are. And we also balance that with the rewards. That's the point that we're missing now. We've got one risk. It's called coronavirus, and that is almost endless at us. And I think it's time for us to get the balance back. And what would you say to people um, Mm -hmm. that would watch this and say, well, hang on a second, this is just the government trying to cover up how badly they're doing with um, coronavirus? Well, in the case of the government's badly doing anything badly over coronavirus, it's the whole issue that is how long do we stay locked down? The government, you know, has got this incredibly successful vaccination program, which I believe now is the uh, most successful in the world, rolling out to all adults down to the age of 18. Uh, This is almost unprecedented, and it has been on scale and on speed of delivery. I volunteered in my local vaccination centre for a while while it was still running, uh, and I saw just how much people appreciate that. So that part of it is critical and fine, but it is also, it is breaking the link, those vaccinations, with the uh, hospitalization rate, which we didn't really hear about much before we chose to continue on till July the 19th. And so that's why this is a very one-sided picture that is presented to us only about coronavirus. You know, what about any flu infections, etc.? So my question really is far better for us to go back now to a more normal way of reporting the news and not have this constant rolling scheme that says, yay number of people have died, yay number of people have been infected without all the other balancing elements, I would then change that. You didn't used to do that uh, in the news before coronavirus. We're now on our way out, which we should have been by now, but we will be. Let's now get back to normal. And that is not reporting every single death, every single, you know, actually not even hospitalizations, but every single infection. We have to learn to live with COVID, but the vaccinations are critical in stopping people dying and stopping people going to hospital and reducing the scale of the infection. And what's the likelihood of this happening, these numbers, um, these updates getting dropped? Well, I don't know. I don't run the BBC, but I would certainly say, why are you constantly doing this? Because it simply just feeds people's uh, perspective that there is something to be desperately scared of and feared, when in actual fact, we have a way out of all of this. And the second element of it, it's, it's, it's information without without a base. In other words, you give people an information chart and they don't know quite what that means relative to everything else. You know, as I said earlier on, relative to pneumonia, more people are dying of pneumonia than die. Uh, Age, average age of death. Absolutely. How much of that are we certain was coronavirus or was it just people who got infected but died of heart disease in the same period? You know, these contextual elements are never there. We just get this straight set of figures 
which tell us something which doesn't have any grounding in balance. And I think we need to get back to that balance. So Ian Duncan Smith, thank you for your time. What do you think to that, Claire? I think that's absolutely right, isn't it? That I don't even object to the figures, but the figures without context, without any sense of in comparison with what, are only ever used to frighten us. You know, mm. there's never a kind of good news, everyone. Yeah. And the other problem is, is that you get this notion that the cases are doubling. You know, they keep saying cases are doubling. We already heard it this evening when you had Dr. Nwero on, that he was basically saying there's this many cases. Well, that's not the same as um, having a concept of what the threat to life is. Yeah, of course. And it frightens people. But the, can you imagine at the end of the news, if what you did was you said, let's have Grim Reaper news now, <laughs> and you read out all of the people who've died of cancer, all of the people who've oh, died yeah. of every single thing, we would basically be paralysed by fear and never leave the house. And I'm sad to say that the impact of this death toll being announced out of context is adding to the unnecessary fears now that actually there has been a break and the break between the link of cases, hospitalizations and deaths, which they just won't tell us.